So, um, as we reach the end of our course, um, I thought uh, it would be very apt to end it with uh, uh, how to build up your CV or as we call it resume. What is the difference between CV and resume? I will let you know in a moment. Remember it comes with an accent. We pronounce it as resume and even write it. Of course, now it is an acceptable form to write it and pronounce it as, as resume which is not very accurate. So, coming back to what we are going to do today, we are going to see how we uh, construct and structure our CV or resume, how to write a cover letter. Cover letter can be for job purposes or even for uh, applying uh, to universities abroad. We have already seen how to do these things, right? In one of our early lectures, we have seen uh, uh, how to apply to foreign universities, recommend, ask for uh, letters of recommendation and uh, ask for um, uh, uh, request for PhD supervision. So, all those kinds of letters are formal letters and so is a cover letter. Uh, CV or resume is uh, uh, can be categorized in two uh, uh, types, chronological and functional CV. Also, we have uh, how to write your cover letter. So, you have to remember how to write the address how to write salutation, introduction, the body, conclusion. So, consider go back to uh, your uh, recent lectures on essay writing and even the um, various kinds of letters that we have been doing and remember that it is always a three para format. If not always then mostly to be on the safe side and then conclusion, signing off and signature. Okay, so, that those are the uh, salient features of a cover letter, CV and resume that can be chronological or functional, we will see how, what is the difference. Now, um, what does a CV do? What does a CV do? CV presents your education and work qualif uh, qualifications uh, or rather work experience, the places where you have been working. So, CV in other words is a record, a document of your education and your work experience. It also um, tells the reader, your potential employer that uh, what skills do you possess. I mean you always pitch your CV according to the needs and requirements of a particular job. So, all, uh, remember it is very good to keep a ready structured CV, but uh, always be uh, willing to uh, make it flexible for various kinds of jobs. Okay, so, every job may have a uh, different requirement, be flexible. So, construct or revisit your CV accordingly. Remember, CV is usually uh, done in a structured or um, in a chronological way that is and what do we mean by chronological? The dates, okay? the dates are mentioned clearly. So, for example, you did your B Tech 2003 to 2008 and then you did your M Tech 2009 perhaps to 2000. 11. So, it could be like 2003 to 2007, 2008 to 2010 I mean whatever way you feel that uh, you want to uh, project your CV. So, we are giving the dates in other words, the years, the, the years of your achievements, the years of your qualifications and your degrees. Here is a sample chronological CV. Please take a look at this. Please read the slide. See how chronological CV is constructed. Look at the way education, there is a separate column. 
it is good to give your CGPA rank and percentage those kinds of things against every qualification. Then look at the details of employment and the designation and below that in a few lines what are the responsibilities and then also look at go uh, uh, below and then you will see the person has also given us the previous experience. So, before doing his present job what was he doing? He was doing he was working as an international student liaison officer and what were the responsibilities all right. So, this is an ideal chronological CV. It gives you as much information as necessary and it also gives you the uh, gives the reader some sense of what uh, your interests are and how you can be used in a company or in an organization. Now, uh, I said that I will give you the distinction between CV and resume. Um, the distinction is of British and American language. British English calls it CV while the resume is more American English. Um, on an American resume, you may or may not include your date of birth, marital status, etcetera. Okay. American uh, um, style also starts with the most recent qualification and work experience in a backward order. So, that is a distinction. This is the CV that I just showed you is British and uh, uh, conventional CV al always uses uh, uh, date of birth and also um, marital status. We also give our address, of course address has to be there whether you are following the American or the British pattern. Now, think of uh, or let us talk about functional CV. Now, this kind of CV is organized by skills and qualities. What are you willing to do and how, what are your uh, primary or basic skills? If your experience is in HR for example, the function could be uh, you are good at presenting the company image, you have an expertise in communication and you manage employee uh, relations uh, etcetera. Okay, so, those are that is the functional CV and under each subheading you can give details of specific experience. So, that is functional. Um, what are the advantages of a functional CV? Now, you want to change to a broad new area of work perhaps and show your relevant skills and experience. So, you want from one company to another company, you want to move to from one company to another country. So, you want to show your relevant experience okay, or skills. Perhaps you have got gaps in your employment history, okay, you have been taking breaks that you do not want to discuss at least on CV. Then what should you do? Follow the functional style. Okay, you are not giving the year, but you are rather talking about your skills and um, qualities that may be of use in that sector. Um, perhaps you have had a lot of jobs and you want to describe the experience you have got as a whole. So, that is also one good example rather than saying 6 months I worked as a, a PR here and 8 months I worked as an HR there rather talk about your skills as a whole. These things happen, it is uh, perhaps not desirable, but these th things do happen and companies may still want a person who has had uh, a variety or a broad range of uh, experiences and how that person can be put to use. Again a functional CV helps you to highlight skills you have gained in previous jobs but uh, that you are for some reason not able to use in your current or most recent job. So, it gives you a 
nice way to project or showcase your skills. Remember that the employer who is looking for applicants with particular skill will find the functional CV more helpful than the chronological one because he or she is looking for a set of skills and not interested in uh, the uh, or may not be too bothered about the kinds of breaks you have been taking in your career. And uh, of course, there is a huge disadvantage also this kind of CV may not uh, make clear important periods of employment and career highlights. So, that is one disadvantage. So, it is up to you how you want to project yourself. Let us look at this sample. Please read the slide. This is a sample functional CV. This person has given a list of his IT skills, computer based skills. And then look at the way he has given subheadings, functional and what are the things, the specifics that he can contribute to. Look at the verbs here and look at the consistency in verbs. He is not saying in first bullet point managing and then in second uh, bullet point I can define look at the consistency managing next defining next designing developing testing next managing then then providing cooperating managing communicating delivering defining interacting identifying look at the wide array of verbs available this is the way you should be using um, in your, you should be using verbs in your written documents which are of such formal nature and that play such an important role. You see, see the way you project yourself in your CV, that is what is going to interest the potential employer in you. So, this is something that requires great deal of practice and skill and always keep, I would suggest always keep. A uh, good CV ready and uh, alter it or tailor it according to the needs of the place you are um, uh, applying. Please look at this slide, the full text of this functional CV is available here. Now, um, I want to you to uh, take down a list of words, most of which you can use in constructing your CV as well as your cover letter, your exercises use these words in uh, sentences of your own while constructing your CV and your cover letter. So, take down the words accurate, adaptable, managing, ability to work under pressure, cooperative, loyal, logical. loyal, logical. All right. Now, um, look at this cover letter, pay attention to this one, look at the slide. Now, the full text is available somewhere, uh, I have given uh, you the link there at the bottom, but I am interested in the structure of this letter. I read your advertisement for a marketing manager with great interest. Of course, remember you have to begin with writing your address, not your address, the writing the address of the company that you are applying to. Okay? So, perhaps to the HR uh, manager okay? uh, and uh, or to the manager or to the CEO or to the president of the company. So, whatever, but you address, give the designation and below that give the address of that company. You can write the date also there and then next you go on to write dear sir or madam. If you know 
uh, the HR person or the person who you are addressing the letter to is a male, say dear sir, if it is a woman, dear madam, if you are not too sure whether it is currently it is a male head or a female head, then you can always write dear sir slash madam. That is the conventional use or the conventional form of a writing a cover letter. And then you write the subject or the objective, it is also very conventional traditional way of mentioning a subject of the letter what you want uh, from that person, maybe applying for the job uh, advertised and then you move on to the body. I read your advertisement for a marketing manager with great interest. If you are seeking to augment your leadership team with an experienced and accomplished marketing professional known for breakthrough results, please consider my enclosed resume. As a Dash Company's marketing manager since 2008, I direct all phases of both the creative and technical elements of marketing initiatives including data mining, brand creation, print and web collateral development, lead generation, channel partner cultivation, customer segmentation profiling as well as CRM and acquisition strategies. Perhaps most importantly, I offer a history of proven results as evidenced by the following marketing accomplishments for my current employer. Okay? And here is a list of accomplishments also that person has given for uh, Due to lack of space, I have removed that, but the full text is available. You can look at the full construction. I would welcome the chance to discuss the market. So, look at the way conclusion has come across. It is very effective. I would welcome the chance to discuss your marketing objectives and ways I can help you attain them. Feel free to call me at whatever number to arrange a meeting. I look forward to speaking with you. Sincerely, dash enclosure resume. So, look at the way now, look at the first paragraph, the, uh, the person is uh, building up the introduction, how he got to know about this advertisement, secondly what, how he can contribute, you know second and third paragraphs and then lastly conclusion. So, it is brief, concise, precise to the point. So, um, always remember what are the elements of an effective cover letter. You should talk about which job you are applying for and how you learnt about it. Okay, so, which company, yeah, yeah, a software professional and which exactly what designation. Then second paragraph should give you a brief overview of your relevant qualifications and experience. Of course, you are attaching your CV, so you do not have to give, repeat yourself but give a brief overview and third paragraph should be about why you are interested in the job and what makes you a suitable candidate. What is your USP, you know, unique selling point and paragraph, last paragraph should be uh, the conclusion. You look forward to meeting this uh, person, you are ready for an interview um, between this date and that date, perhaps you are available, M mention your availability. Perhaps you are not available in town uh, right away. You should be very clear about it and then be very polite and say that you would look forward to hear from that person. And then of course, you have to remember signing off is always important. Yours faithfully, yours sincerely and then your name always do these things. So, in order to understand the mechanics of a cover letter, remember that you should write the address, name, position of the person you are writing to, you sir and madam. Um, we use to whom it may concern, if we do not know the name of the person we are writing to. Remember, you should always, what we have been talking about in essays applies here also. Always avoid contracted forms like do not and uh, aren't and should not. Okay? Those are not very formal and especially in uh, letters which are uh, which carry so much of um, importance for your career. 
remember you should always round off with your sincerely yours faithfully you um, i have already recommended advanced learner dictionary for you uh, to you that is oxford ald so um, there is a detailed and a very nice description of how to write cover letters and cvs so if you want more information please look it up remember you should never write your name at the top of your cover letter but always at the signing off and signature stage now uh, let me give you a speaking exercise this is something that you can do in pairs tell your partner what are the highlights of your cover letter use phrases and expressions such as native language here you should talk about what is your native language then near native command of some other language perhaps you have a near native command of hindi or gujarati or marathi or french or italian include all that proficiency in english this is important in times of globalization your proficiency in english needs to be highlighted um high school qualifications graduation uh, uh, qualifications about details about that then skills that you can bring to the table and references who are your referees remember potential employees always try to contact people who you, who know you which is very logical okay there is a reason for doing that someone should vouch for you so therefore it is important that you have your referees right all right now let's move on and look at this exercise i want you to fill in the blanks i'll give you the list of words that you can use but look at the passage first please find dash my cv in application for the post advertised in the dash on 30th november the nature of my degree course has prepared me for this dash it involved a great deal of independent research requiring initiative dash and a wide range of skills for one course an understanding of the dash industry was essential i uh, uh, please note that wherever i have inserted x x x we don't need to fill in any blank here i'm just covering uh, that exact uh, names and uh, proper nouns here industry was essential i found this subject very stimulating i am a fast and accurate writer with a keen eye for dash i uh, uh, and i should be very grateful for the opportunity to progress to market reporting uh, i am able to take on the dash of this position immediately and have the enthusiasm and determination to dash that i make a success of it thank you for taking the time to dash this application and i look forward to hearing from you in the near future use the following words self motivation ensure consider responsibility detail position and closed so for example look at this first line please find enclosed my cv in application for the post advertise advertise in so and so newspaper and this the nature of my degree course has prepared me for this what should be the next word please use refer to that list and come back to it the full text is available on this slide you can tally your answers here all right now please take a look at this these are the references for uh, your cover letters for your resumes and cvs now um let's practice some grammar look at this slide this is just a practice text we are going to practice our simple present tense and then i'll give you exercise once we look at the when once we finish reading the text 
Rooftop gardens also called living roofs or green roofs have many advantages including providing more space for agriculture, adding beauty to the cityscape and increasing air quality. During photosynthesis, plants remove carbon dioxide from the air and release oxygen that we need to breathe. On hot summer days, rooftop gardens may also keep buildings cooler than traditional roofs, especially larger buildings that often have tar and gravel roof surfaces. Because they sit in the direct sunlight for many hours, the temperature of traditional rooftops tends to rise above the actual air temperature. That heat radiates back into the environment, making urban areas much warmer than rural and suburban ones. If you live in a big city or have visited a shopping center with a lot of concrete and buildings, during warm months you might have noticed the temperature difference. When heat is radiated back into the environment from rooftops, an area with many buildings like a city can experience an increase in local air temperatures by as much as 5 to 7 degrees Fahrenheit. This phenomenon is called the urban heat island effect. Now, the, your exercise here is, I want you to identify any five instances of present tense. Also identify any two complex sentences. Please keep going back to your sentence structure, simple complex compound. Remember the distinction. We have done that in lot of detail in our, uh, some of the earlier classes. And your third exercise is identify any three connecting or linking words. So, even when you write your cover letter, you need all these. You need to use present tense, you, you need to use a mix of sentences, you need to use or have some command of uh, linking words, make good. Uh, transition, okay, use the hooks and signal words. Go back to the earlier lectures and you will understand what I am talking about. Now, let us read this passage. Look at the slide and then I will give you some questions based on this. Living in a new culture can be exhilarating, personally rewarding and intellectually stimulating. It can also be frustrating. It is one thing to visit a country moving on when you have seen enough and it is quite another to live there and function according to a different and sometimes mysterious set of norms. Participation in your chosen abroad program provides a rare opportunity for you to begin to know another society from within but it involves certain responsibilities. The most obvious one is to adapt one's behavior to the customs and expectations of the host country. This is not to deny one's own culture, but to respect that of others. Another even more subtle responsibility you have is to remain open in order to become aware of similarities and differences, to learn rather than to judge. This can be the most rewarding experience in your education. Now, my question to you is, what is the passage all about? Talk, work in a pair, talk to your neighbor, what is the passage all about? Now, look at this slide and I am giving you the exercises. First, you, I want you to change the following sentence into its past form. The most obvious one is to adapt one's behavior to the customs and expectations of the host country. Second question, I want you to find the meanings of these words, exhilarating, stimulating, subtle. And third, I want you to change into adverbs, certain rare culture. Now, uh, give a suitable title also to this passage. Let us have some speaking based on this exercise work in pairs and discuss the problems that uh, one can face or one may face when people go abroad. I want you to talk about the cultural difficulties people face when they travel to foreign countries. You should uh, cover talking about uh, food, clothes, language and the weather. So, use all these terms, cover all these 
points and then discuss it with your partner, neighbor or your classmate that what are the problems one may face when we travel abroad. So, the passage you might have guessed is about culture shock and adaptation to foreign cultures. Please look at this slide, the full text is available here. Now, let us read this one, let us read this the given passage, look at the slide and then we will do exercises based on this. No one has ever explained space in all its bewildering glory as well as Sagan did. This is a passage about the great Carl Sagan. He has been uh, gone now for nearly two decades, but people old enough to remember him will easily be able to summon his voice, his funness for the word billions and his boyish enthusiasm for understanding the universe we are so lucky to live in. He led a feverish existence with uh, multiple careers stumbling over one another as if he knew he would not live to an old age. Among other things, he served as an astronomy professor at Cornell, wrote more than a dozen books, worked at on NASA robotic missions, edited the scientific journal Icarus and somehow found time to park himself repeatedly, arguably compulsively in front of TV cameras. He was the house astronomer basically on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Then in an astonishing burst of energy in his mid 40s, he co-created and hosted a 13 part PBS television series Cosmos. It aired in the fall of 1980 and ultimately reached hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Sagan was the most famous scientist in America, the face of science itself. Now let us look uh, at some of the vocabulary and words here. Um, bewildering glory, I am not going to give you the meanings, by now you should know how to infer meanings from the context itself. Okay. And then you look at uh, someone, his voice, boyish enthusiasm, feverish existence, multiple careers stumbling over one another, park himself arguably compulsively and then I would also want you to look up what is Johnny Carson's tonight show. See these are uh, the ways we um, understand other cultures. So, tonight show was uh, a very uh, popular show at one point. So, I would want you to look at some of these very popular television series and programs. Mm, that have been an important part of um, the culture, especially in English speaking countries. Now, let us look at the exercises. I want you to give a suitable title to the extract. Please look at the slide. I want you to make sentences from the words bewildering, astonishing and multiple and give antonyms, you know opposites, boyish, funness, arguably. You may use your dictionary for this purpose. All right. And uh, I would also want you to do this activity that, that will definitely help you uh, in uh, your scientific uh, career as well uh, in cultural adaptation and also developing your language and uh, uh, speci especially the way. Um, uh, you know uh, to develop your pronunciation and vocabulary. So, I would want you to watch an episode of Carl Sagan's TV series Cosmos and discuss the show with your friends. It is freely available uh, on the net. Look at this link and the full text of this passage is available here. Now, um, before we wind up, I want you to do this exercise, choose the correct word. Please look at the slide here. All were there except, except Ravi. Because of excess, access of stress, the students are unable to do justice to their projects. There is a good shop for accessories 
accessory in the city center. The accused got a bail and bail and is currently out of prison. So, you know the answers, all were there and the first one except Ravi, because of access, the first one of stress. There is a good shop for accessories, accessories you know um, things that we use for example, for women you can say a hair clip or shoes or even a handbag they are accessories, clips. Mm, things like that, they are accessories for men, uh, uh, perhaps a wallet, perhaps a belt, you know, those are accessories. So, there is a difference between accessory and accessory. Ex the second one is an example of uh, um, an accomplice, you and your accessory. And the last one, of course, is the, also the first one B A I L, the accused got a bail. So, all first words are the correct words. Now, let us look at this slide, second one, do ensure that you submit the report on time or ensure or ensure there was a lecture on the effects of thunder and uh, lightning and lighting on electric circuits. The house has an iron grill, a grill in the balcony, a systemic or systematic disease is the one that invades the blood stream. Look at all these sentences, of course, all the correct answers are the first words, but look at the difference and how often when we are writing we get confused. Now, uh, before we wind up, I want you to practice your word formation. Here is a list of prefixes, please look at the slide, you make two words each using these prefixes, audio bio, cyber, e, radio and uber. And then next is I want you to practice suffixes, form words using two words each, using suffix as ahalik, loving, mania, feel, like and minded. So, thank you very much, our next class is going to be our last class as well.